This week, we are going to dig deep into the world of AI and how it's transforming our world, from politics and upcoming elections to art and questions about plagiarism. But how does artificial intelligence actually work and what software do people use? To answer those questions, we brought in an expert. Verid Schwartz joins us now. She is an assistant professor of computer science at UBC. Thank you very much for joining us. Great to have you here. Thank you for having me here. So many people have heard about AI models like Jet GPT. They may have not used them. We have our laptop set up here. I'm going to show the feed. Can you show us actually how it works? Yeah, of course. So um, you can do a lot of things with it. I'm just going to use it to phrase an email. Sure. Uh, so for example, I can ask it, um, can you help me uh, phrase an email uh, to my boss uh, asking for a raise? <laughs> <laughs> a few people have written those over their time. Yeah. And the result is what? Yeah, it's very quickly um, providing this um, really nice, well-written um, template uh -huh. um, where you can fill your own information, like your name and position. Uh, now, I do notice that um, it's a little bit formal, mm -hmm. in my opinion. So you can also interact with it, and you can say, uh, can you make it less formal? So you can refine mm -hmm. your request, and then very quickly, it yeah it becomes very informal. From hello to yeah, hey, to boss's uh, name, yeah. hope you're doing well, exclamation point. Yeah. I think a lot of people have written those emails. How does this model know to give you this information? So ChatGPT and other models, similar models, um, these are language models. So at their core, uh, what they do is very similar to autocomplete mm -hmm. uh, that we have in our phones. Uh, they have been trained by reading uh, vast amount of text online, mm -hmm. pretty much like all the text online, and learning to just predict the, the next word in the sentence. Uh, and after being exposed to uh, a lot of text, uh, they, they learn, first of all, about language. So they learn, for example, uh, how to generate a well-formed grammatical English sentence, mm -hmm. but also about the meaning of the words and how to generate a sentence that makes sense. And, and they learn um, knowledge from the text that they um, read online. So they, they actually can generate essays in, in a wide uh, array of topics. Mm -hmm. Now, your work involves developing and improving AI yeah. to reduce bias. We've heard concerns about that before. What limitations are there with these programs when it comes to that? Yeah, so one of the things that we are currently working on is uh, a limitation um, that stems from the, the source of the data. So as I mentioned, these models, they learn knowledge about the world. Mm -hmm. But the knowledge comes from um, web data. And for example, if you're looking at an English language model, it's been trained on English text uh, from the web that mostly comes statistically mostly from users in the US. Mm -hmm. So what it learns about the world is through this US-centric or North American lens. Uh, and then if you interact with it, um, it would assume these cultural norms and uh, social norms uh, in North America. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, for example, um, uh, I, I, I had this example a few months ago that I asked it about. I just made up this story about a couple that um, ate in a restaurant in Spain and tipped 4%. Mm -hmm. And then ChatGPT judged them as being frugal. Uh, it said it, they're either frugal mm -hmm. on a tight budget or uh, they didn't like the service. Oh, they're completely ignoring the norm in Spain. Yes, to tip. that's right. Um, yeah, now it, it's actually been fixed uh, yeah. last time I checked it. But I do have some other examples that we yeah. can try. Sure. Well, well let's, we, we know uh, AI models also produce images. Yeah. Uh, let's look at one, I think, from Bing's image creator, if we have that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, the same problem exists with images because, again, uh, it's been trained on data online. Most of the data online comes from Western countries. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you ask Bing, um, generate an image of um, breakfast, for example. Mm -hmm. Here it is. And here we are. Uh, it's a mostly Western breakfast. Uh, it's not what Bacon people... Eggs. In, yeah. yeah. Um, Interesting. Same problem appears when you ask it mm -hmm. to generate a, pro uh, a picture of a wedding. It's all like white dresses, uh, uh, nothing from different cultures. Yeah. 
What should be the takeaway from this when people are actually using these? What's the, what's the, the, the lesson you want people to, to learn from this? So I think that uh, we need to be very explicit about the assumptions that are made in the model. It's, for me, it's, it's clear that that's just a reflection of the data it was trained on. But I think that when um, they, we need to acknowledge that people from other cultures, non-Western cultures, when they're interacting with these tools, they get a worse experience. Uh, a lot of people would use the English tools because the corresponding tools in their language are of lower quality. Um, but um, yeah, they're, they're getting a worse experience with the English models as well. And worse than that, um, now that these models are incorporated into applications that can affect people's lives, make decisions and predictions about people, uh, having this North American bias or Western bias could actually end up discriminating against people or uh, misunderstanding people and, dis and, and um, um, perpetuating biases mm -hmm. that exist in the data. Cautionary tale on some new technology. Verid Schwartz, we really appreciate your time and your expertise. Thanks Thank for coming you. in. Thank you for having me.